All right, recording in progress. Share the screen. Okay, so we're finishing up one six. Whoops, let me get that focus in there. <clears throat> I think I said this in the video over the weekend, but skip 69B, 71B, and 73B. Those are not really good questions for pre calc. They're good for calc, but not for pre calc. So skip 69B, 71B, 73B. I think I alluded to it. Uh, in the video that I sent over the weekend for the quiz, but just in case you missed it, there it is. And speaking of the video on the weekend, so you should have gotten my reply back for the quiz. Again, if you didn't, let me know. And I sent the solutions um, video to that. So quizzes are out of five. So you got five out of five, four out of five, three out of five, and so on. Uh, if you miss a quiz or uh, you didn't do it, it counts as a zero, but you get to drop one out of every four quizzes. So keep that in mind. Okay, I'm gonna go back and do some more of the word problems at the end of one six, and then go on to one seven. Remember, we're aiming for our first exam this coming Friday. So I'll talk more about the exam as we get closer to it. Okay, so every week, it's either quiz or exam. So quiz, quiz, but this is gonna be exam, and then quiz, exam, and so on, okay? So let me set up some of the word problems at the end. So 59. Okay, so two ships sail from the same port. The first ship leaves at noon and travels east at 10 miles per hour. The second leaves 3 p.m. three hours later, travels south at 15 miles per hour. Find the distance between the ships as a function of the time after three o'clock. Okay, so this one leaves at noon. This one leaves at three, and the picture is like this. So here is the setup. 15, so for me, knots and miles per hour is gonna be the same. All right, so let me call this X as a time after 3 p.m. But this ship got a three hour head start. So it's gonna be X plus three, right? It started three hours first. Because it leaves at 12 and this one leaves at three. Okay, now distance equals wait times time. Distance is wait times time. So the distance is the hypotenuse. Okay. So it's a square root of this thing squared times this thing squared. Okay, so what is this distance? It's rate times time. Rate is 10. Okay, time is x plus three. This one is 15 miles per hour times x. All right, so the distance is a function f of x. Okay, it's just gonna be a square root of 15x squared plus 10 times x plus three squared. And then I say, et cetera, meaning you finish the rest of that up, okay? But it's basically the hypotenuse. Distance squared is this thing squared times this thing squared. What is this thing squared? 10 times x plus three. This is 15x squared, okay? So you'll finish the rest of that one up. Okay, let me just show it to you again. So you've got it on the video. Okay, then I was gonna show you 65. I do see some things in the chat. I'm not sure I can get it. Uh, okay, please, I think I'm gonna go over the ones that's there. Um, so I'll stop share. Okay, it seems like there's some issue hearing me. Um, can, you, can you all hear me right now? Or can you put in the chat or thumbs up? Can you hear me or can you not hear me? Anybody, are we good? Okay, see some thumbs up, okay. So hopefully the video will come out okay too, but I'm not even sure about that, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, 65. A rectangle is placed inside a circle of radius R so that the center of the rectangle and the center of the circle coincide and the corners of the rectangle are on a circle, express the area of the rectangle as a function of the length x of one of its sides. Okay, the picture is like this. Right, so you have this r, 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 r for radius. I'm going to call this x. 
that's the length of the side. So if this is X, this distance right here is half X. That's half X. And I'm calling this Y. So in other words, I have a triangle that looks like this, R radius, half X and Y. I need to solve for Y. So Pythagorean theorem, Y squared plus half X squared equals R squared. Subtract one fourth X squared on both sides. That's what that arrow means. Arrow means throw it over. Y squared equals R squared minus one fourth X squared. So Y is the square root of that. So Y is the square root of R squared minus one fourth X squared. And so now, they want the area function. Area is length times width. So I said this was X. However, the length here is 2Y. When I used my Y right here, that was just in order for me to get the Pythagorean theorem. Right? That's Y. But the length of this entire side here is 2Ys. So it's two of these guys. So area is length times width. I decided to call this thing X. In order to use the Pythagorean theorem, I had to figure this out, which was y. But as far as the length of the rectangle, it's two of them, because I'm going all the way across. So that's why it's x times two of these guys, two radical r squared minus one fourth x squared. Right? So final answer is area is two x times square root of r squared minus one fourth x squared. Okay, so that's one there. Okay, then 69, I want to show you. A can has a volume of 900 centimeters cubed. The can is in the shape of a right circular cylinder with a top and a bottom. Express the amount of material needed to construct the can as a function of the radius of the can. Okay, skip B, as we said before. <coughs> so we need some formulas here. Yeah, skip 69B. So I've got a can right here. The volume they told me is 900 centimeters cubed. The volume is the cross-sectional area times the height. Now the volume is area of the circle times the height. The formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared, right? So I just use pi r squared times h, or 900 equals pi r squared h. Solving for h, if I divide both sides by pi r squared, divide by pi r squared, h is equal to 900 over pi r squared. Now, surface area. <clears throat> What's the surface area of this can? So how much metal do I need for the can? Well, if you got a top and a bottom, both of them are pi r squared, so two pi r squared, plus the lateral surface, Right, so if this surface, if you imagine cutting it and opening it up, I get a rectangle, don't I? Okay, this lateral surface, this thing right here, cut it, open it up. The height is h. The length would be the circumference of the circle, right? And imagine going around that circle, you cut it and open it up like this, then the circle right here ends up straightening out. So it would be the circumference 2 pi r times h. So in other words, surface area is 2 pi r squared plus two pi r h, but I know h is now this. So right here, I put that expression. So two pi r squared plus two pi r h is 900 over pi r squared. Pi cancels out, pi cancels out. One of the r's cancel out. So final answer is two pi r squared plus 1800 over r. Okay, and you can just stop right there and skip 69b as we were. Okay, and in the interest of time, the last one I was going to show you was 71. And I was not able to show all of them, but it almost turns out if I show all of them, then I've literally done them all and there's nothing left for you to do. So the last one I'm willing to show you now is 71. Uh, if, if I have time, maybe later in the week, I'll come back to 73, but I, need, I definitely need to move on to start giving you 1.7 and 1.8 before the week's out. So let me go on and show you set up for 71, the uh, racetrack. Right. A one mile racetrack is built with two straight sides of length L and semicircles at the end of radius R. 
express the area enclosed by the oval as a function of the radius r. And skip B, as we said. Okay. So here's my picture. And you track people know this, especially you got a straight part, curve, semicircle, straight, curve. <clears throat> All right, this is R. Now, if this is R, I claim this is 2R because there's a radius here and there's a radius here. So this is 2R. Now, I'm going to run like this and like this. I claim that if I go all the way around the track once, I've actually done one circle. You agree with that? These two combine to be one circle because I run half a circle here and half a circle here, right? So I've run one complete circle and two straight parts, right? This L right here, this L right here. The formula for the circumference of a circle, two pi r. Area of a circle, pi r squared. So here's a general circle, radius r. Circumference two pi r, area is pi r squared. <clears throat> now, they tell me it's one mile all the way around. That's this straight part, this straight part. So that's an L, that's another L, that's two L. And one full circle. There's a half a circle, there's half a circle. Okay, so let's pretend I start right here. If I run that L, half a circle, another L, another half a circle, which means I've run two L and one full circle made up of this half and this half. So it's two L plus two pi R, formula for circumference. That's one mile. Okay, subtract two pi R, subtract two pi R. I get two L equals one minus two pi R, divide both sides by two. So L is one minus two pi R divided by two. So I have an expression for L now. L is now this weird thing, one minus two pi r over two. <clears throat> now they ask for an expression for the area. So what's the area? Well, I got a rectangle and again, a full circle. If I ignore the rectangular part, that half a circle and that half a circle make up a whole circle, right? So if you look at a track and you track a few people know this, or even a football field has a track sometimes, right? So I say, what's the area of the grass, grassy area, if the whole thing was grass? I got a rectangle and a full circle, two half circle. So I put pi r squared, that's the two half circles, which gives me one full circle. And a rectangle length times width. And so the length is one minus two pi r divided by two length times the width, which is 2R. So full circle again, that plus that, so pi R squared, and this rectangle, length is that thing, width is 2R. The twos cancel out. So final answer, pi R squared plus one minus two pi R times R, okay. So those are some of the problems at the end of 1.6, some of the harder word problems. And that's as much as I have time to show you now. So again, if I have time, I can maybe do some more, but I think I'm showing you enough. I need, need to move on to 1.7 now, please. Okay, so let me get started with 1.7 material, which is linear functions. Most of this should be a review of straight lines. Okay, so it should already be in your bag of tricks, so to speak, page 55. A linear function looks like this, y equals f of x. I don't really like the way the author puts it, ax plus b, technically that's correct, but I'm gonna make it mx plus b, because you're used to that, right? Slope intercept form. So if an equation looks like y equals f of x, remember f of x and y are the same if it's a function, equals mx plus b, then you say, oh yeah, slope y intercept. Linear functions, straight lines. If you want to put that in your formula sheet, you may, although technically you should already have that memorized. <clears throat> Page 56, we've already done this already. We call the definition of a slope. How do you find the slope of a line joining two points? Slope is y2 minus y1 
divided by x2 minus x1. Again, you should have that memorized, but you can put it on your formula sheet. If we were meeting face-to-face, -face, I'd make you guys memorize all this, but since they taught us to make things easier on our students during the pandemic, so one way of making it easier is, okay, you can have a cheat sheet during exams. So if you forgot the formula for slope, you feel more confident if you put it on a formula sheet, you're allowed to. <clears throat> Likewise, point slope form of a line. Again, that's something back from algebra. If you have a point x1, y1, slope n, formula is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Again, we've already done a problem with this, but put this on your cheat sheet if you wish. It does that one harder problem we did a while back involving that. So point slope. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Then on page 57, we have some stuff involving slopes of lines, but let me check the chat real quickly. Okay, so I think we're good there. Right. Positive slope, lines going up. Negative slope, lines going down. <coughs> So what's going on here, page 57, figure five, figure out all of these lines. So notice y equals three x, two x, x, half x. All of them are going like that. As you're moving from left to right, it's rising. And you can see the bigger the slope, the steeper your graph, right? So slope is three, which is steeper than a slope of two, which is steeper than a slope of one, which is steeper than a slope of a half. And what do you notice about all these? They're all going like that. Negative slope. The graph is going down as you move from left to right. Okay. And again, as the slopes get bigger in absolute value, it becomes steeper. So slope is negative a half, negative one, negative two, negative three. So, right? Negative a half, negative one. So it's getting steeper the larger the absolute value becomes. Okay. Horizontal line, line is like that. Slope is zero. Vertical line, the text says no slope. I don't really like that language because no slope can be interpreted as zero. And I'm gonna say undefined slope, undefined. Because no slope, you might interpret that as meaning slope is zero, like a horizontal line. So vertical line, we're gonna say undefined slope. The reason why it's undefined is because if you try to plug into here, zero is on the bottom. If you have a horizontal line and you plug in here, zero is on top. You're allowed to have zero on top of a fraction. As long as the denominator is not zero, then the result is zero. All right, and they go ahead and put slope intercept form on page 57, y equals mx plus b. Never mind about this. I don't even know why they bother to put this in. It's true, but I don't like it. Put this on your cheat sheet if you need it, y equals mx plus b. That's the same thing as we had back here, wasn't it? f of x equals mx plus b. <clears throat> and review of more stuff, page 59. Parallel and perpendicular lines. Okay. Do you recall what happens when I have parallel lines, two lines that are parallel? What seems to be true about their slopes? They're equal, right? same slope. So lines L1 and L2 are parallel if only if M1 equals M2. So the first slope and the second slope are the same. That does seem sort of intuitive. Perpendicular is not so intuitive. Perpendicular means they meet at 90 degrees. Okay, so 90 degree angle like that, or like that, or like that. Well, it looks like one of them is positive and the other is negative, which is true. What's not so obvious is this result, but it's true nonetheless. <clears throat> so again, put it on your cheat sheet if you need to, your formula sheet. Lines L1 and L2 are perpendicular if and only if M1, M2 equals negative one, okay? It might be easier to think of it this way. If you divide both sides by M2, it looks like this. So if you wanna put this on your formula sheet, you may. M1 equals negative one divided by M2. It means the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So the language we say is 
negative reciprocal. You say, what is negative reciprocal? Well, you should know reciprocal. Reciprocal means you flip it, right? Like the reciprocal of two over three is three over two. Negative reciprocal means change the sign. So if it used to be a positive, make it a negative. If it used to be a negative, make it a positive for negative reciprocal. Okay. So an example is if you have two thirds, two thirds, the negative reciprocal is a negative three halves. You flip and change the sign. Okay. Or suppose you have a negative a half. What's the negative reciprocal of negative a half? It'd be a positive two over one or two. Okay. And I'll show you examples of all of these. So perpendicular there. All right. Again, none of this should be new. You should have seen most of this before. All right, so let me show you the problems. Let's see what's on our assignment of 1.7. 1 to 17 odd, 19, 20, 21 to 43. So we're over here. And so for the benefit of those of you that don't have the text and aren't getting it. Page 62, here you go. Let's see, that's up to about 33, mm, a little bit more, mm, more. Okay, that's that. And then I guess the word problems here, 41 and 43, mm, there we go. Okay, so you can watch the video as necessary. All right, so as usual, I'll try to show you at least one of each type of problem. Okay, so 1.7, please. So one, three, five, summer, seven are very similar. I'll show you three. So sketch the straight line determined by the points and find the slope intercept equation of the line. Okay, so number three, they give you negative two, one, and two, negative four. So I just freehand. And by the way, if you don't want to buy graph paper, you don't have to, you can just freehand like I'm doing. I don't mind you have graph paper, but just freehand like this. <clears throat> okay, negative two, one is one, two, one. Two, negative four, one, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so you just connect it and there's a line. It says, what's the equation of that line? Okay. And first of all, a little double checks. Do you think this will be a positive or a negative slope? It's going like that. So it should be negative, it's falling. Remember, if the graph goes like that, positive slope. The graph goes like that, negative slope. If I have a horizontal line, slope is zero. Vertical line, slope is undefined. Okay, and again, put it on your cheat sheet if you wish. Okay, how do I find the equation of the line? Okay, so first to give me two points. Two points means I can find a slope. So I'll do my y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 business. So m for slope, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Okay, so it's gonna be negative four minus one divided by two minus a negative two. Negative five fourths. So the slope is negative five fourths. It's negative, double check, yes, it's falling. Now I'll do the point slope form. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Okay, if you forgot what it is, put it on your cheat sheet for the test on Friday. Put your formula sheet down. Okay, so M negative five fourths goes right there. And well, you're allowed to pick either point. I'll pick negative two, one as X1, Y1. So throw it into this formula. Negative five fourths goes there. Negative two goes there. One goes there. Putting negative two, one. Now I clean it up. <clears throat> Let's see, double negative, so positive, right? Negative five fourths, x plus two. <clears throat> distribute. So distribute negative five fourths x, the negative five fourths times two, two cancels to four, leaving me with negative five halves. Add one to both sides. Add one in the form of two over two, because I have to combine it with negative five over two. And it looks like this is my final answer. So y equals f of x, and the y and f of x mean the same thing. f of x just tells you it's a function. So I get negative five fourths x minus three over two. 
And that's my answer. Okay, so that's the equation of the line. All right, so one, three, five, and seven are similar. I did three for you. So use that template to do one, five, and seven. Okay, now the nine through 16 bunch, find a slope of the line and sketch its graph. Okay, so I'm gonna try to pick one of the harder ones. So maybe 11, three X minus Y equals two. Three X minus Y equals two. So make it look like Y equals MX plus B. So I added Y and subtracted two. I trust you know what I mean by the arrows. Okay, the arrow means add Y to both sides. The two over there means subtract two in both sides. So three X minus two equals Y or Y equals three X minus two. <clears throat> That's the M, that's the B. So you might recall, this is the Y intercept, negative two, one, two. Slope is three, which is the same as three over one. I write it as a fraction so I can do rise over the run. <laughs> so the run is one, the rise is three. So my starting point is here, and then I move one to the right, and then one, two, three up. And then I just connect them, just play connect the dots after that. And that's what I got, okay? So that's how that goes. And again, uh, we call, all of this should be old stuff. So I'm willing to go a little bit fast. So some of you might be saying, you know, maybe I'm going kind of fast. Yeah, but you should have seen this before. Now, if this is the first time you've ever seen it, like if you were my algebra one class, I would go much slower, but you've seen this in algebra one, you've seen it in algebra two, elementary algebra, intermediate algebra. So. It's, it's not brand new. Hopefully it's just refresh it in your mind. Oh yeah, I remember doing that in the past somewhere. Okay, so I make this look like Y equals MX plus B. The B is negative two. That means I go down to two. Slope is three, which means over one, up three, connect the dots. <clears throat> okay, now 15, it just says Y equals two. You might recall Y equals a number is a horizontal line. If all they say is something like y equals two, it's a horizontal line, which means the slope is zero. So all I do is go up to y equals two, one, two, and just draw myself a horizontal line. And there it is. And that's the graph. And incidentally, notice it does seem to fit the idea that the slope is zero, right? I'm walking on level ground. I'm not going up, I'm not going down, right? It's just level, slope is zero. Okay, so I've shown you one from this batch, one from this batch, and how about something here? 17, find the equations of the line that pass through the point and have the given slope, A, B, C, D. Okay, so I'll show you D because it's the hardest, maybe it's a fraction. So the point is one four, the slope is one third. So I use the point slope form, Y minus Y one equals M times X minus X one. <laughs> point one four, one four. X1 goes there, Y1 goes there, M goes there. Okay, and just clean it up. Distribute one third X minus one third, add four, add four, common denominator is three, four times three, one times three. So minus one plus 12 is 11. So final answer, F of X is one third X plus 11 over three. So that's how you do that one. Okay, then let's see, 23, okay. The equation of a line is given together with a point that is not in line. Find a slope intercept form of the equation of a line that passes through the given point parallel to the given line, perpendicular to the given line. Okay, so how do you do that? So 21 definitely looks easier than 23 because they give you the origin. So I'll show you 23. Y equals blah, 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 negative one, two. Okay, so 23, how do you do that?
point slope. The first case parallel. The slope is negative two. If I want a line parallel to this, I keep the slope negative two. Perpendicular. Perpendicular means negative reciprocal. So I flip this and change the sign. So instead of negative two, make it positive. And what's the reciprocal of negative, of, sorry, what's the reciprocal of two? One half. And so parallel, my abbreviation for parallel is draw two parallel lines. And my abbreviation for perpendicular, which is standard, by the way, it's not my abbreviation, it's a standard mathematics abbreviation, is I have an upside down T, which looks like it's perpendicular. <clears throat> so if you ever see me draw two in tight lines, it's not meant to be 11, if the context is clear, it's like parallel railroad tracks, right? So that's parallel, that's perpendicular. Okay? Because it gets too tiring to write P-A-R-A-L-L-E-R-L -L -L -E and P-E-R-P-E-N-D-I-C-U-L-A-R. -E -E it's too much to write. So perpendicular, upside down T, parallel, like that. All right, so point slope for the parallel case, y minus two equals negative two parentheses, x minus a negative one, et cetera. And this is for parallel. Perpendicular, everything's the same, except don't use a negative two, use positive a half. We're still using negative one, two. So it's still y minus two, it's still x minus a negative one, but now one half is what I use here. And then I say, et cetera, because you can finish the rest of the algebra. That's there. Cool. Now, 19 and 20. Group the following lines into sets that are parallel. Group the following lines into sets that are perpendicular. So out of the 10, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, pair them so that you have parallel lines. Pair them up by twos. Same thing here. Pair them up so that they're perpendicular. So how do I do that? So I have to kind of show you both of these at the same time possible. <laughs> That has a slope of zero, horizontal line. If all it says is y equals something, does anything else look like y equals something? F. So A and F are parallel, A, F. Okay, what else? Well, we can work on finding the slopes out. So here's A is horizontal. B, slope is one. C, slope is negative one. Mx plus B. D, slope is one. E, slope is two. F is horizontal. A is also horizontal. Slope is zero. G, H, I, and K, you got to do a little work. G, if I subtract X, it's Y equals negative X. Slope is negative one. H, add two X to both sides. Y equals two X plus two. That means the slope is two. Um, I'm a little confused. The instructions in the, in the book say to group the following lines into sets that are parallel. Yes. So first, oh, we have you to find do the that slopes. next? Oh, okay, okay, I'm confused. I'm finding all the slopes okay. right now. Okay. I, uh, I add y to both sides and subtract four. X minus four equals y. That's what it says, sorry. X minus four equals y. That's a y there. Slope is one. J, if I add two y to both sides, and subtract one, two y equals two x minus one. Divide both sides by two, y equals x minus a half. So the slope is one. 
Okay, so the hard part for G, H, I, and J is you can't read the slope right off directly from the MX plus B. You have to make it look like MX plus B and then go from there. Okay, so I got this little table now. And now I just look for matching slopes. So A and F are both horizontal, they're parallel. Okay, C and G both have a slope of negative one. So C, G. E and H both have a slope of two. So E is paired with H. I and J both have a slope of one, so they're paired. And finally, B and D also have a slope of one. So actually all of these could be grouped together. Uh, I, J, B, and D, these can actually be all lumped together. But otherwise that works. You know, 20 is harder because we're looking for perpendicular lines. That means the slopes are negative reciprocals. Right? We talked about that negative reciprocal business before. Or one other option, we could have one horizontal line and one vertical line, right? If I have a horizontal line and a vertical line, a horizontal line has a slope of zero. A vertical line has an undefined slope, but they're obviously perpendicular. Okay. If you have any tilt to it at all, then you can use the rule for perpendicular that I showed you before, where the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. Okay. This problem is a perfect example of that, which is why I decided to include 20. And yes, 20 is even. You don't have the answers in the back of the book, but you got the answers right here that I'll show you. So just like for problem 19, first we've got to come up with all the slopes. Twenty. Y equals negative one. Y equals a constant. That's horizontal. Slope is zero. B. X equals a constant. X equals negative two. That's a vertical line. Slope undefined which incidentally tells me automatically that these two are gonna be perpendicular, right? One horizontal line and one vertical line, right? Horizontal line and a vertical line are gonna be perpendicular. Whoops. So A, B, A, B are perpendicular. <coughs> okay. C, slope is two, MX plus B. D, slope is three. E, slope is one third. F, slope is one. G, slope is negative one. H, slope is negative three. Only I and J do I have to do some calculation. So I, X plus three Y equals negative five. I subtract X on both sides. Subtract X, it looks like that. Three Y equals negative X minus five. Divide both sides by three. So Y equals negative one third X minus five thirds. So the slope is negative one third. And finally J, solve for Y, subtract X on both sides. Looks like that, two y equals negative x minus one, divided by two, y equals negative a half x minus a half. So the slope is negative one half. <coughs> okay, so now we pair negative reciprocals of each other. Oh, and yeah, we already have A and B, a horizontal line and a vertical line. You, you can't use a negative reciprocal business because there's no reciprocal of undefined. Yes, but we know that they're perpendicular. Right. So I look for negative reciprocals. CJ, C and J, two 
and negative a half are negative reciprocals. Not just reciprocal. If I ask for the reciprocal of two, it's one half, but I want the negative reciprocal. So two and negative a half. E and H, because one third and negative three are negative reciprocal. F, G, F, G, negative one and one. What's the reciprocal of negative one? One divided by negative one, still negative one. The negative reciprocal would be one. And what else do I have? D and I, D and I, right? Negative one third and positive three is what we have here. Negative one third and positive three. And so even though 20 is in in the back of the book, here's the answer right now. A with B, C, J, E, H, F, G, and D, I for that one. Okay. All right, so that's it for that one. And let's see how much time do I have? Not that much time left. Let me see if I can get you some of the problems at the end. This point seven. Let me see. Moving right along. Find the slope-intercept equation of the line that satisfies the given conditions. Okay. <laughs> so, I'll show you twenty-nine. X intercept one. Y intercept three. <laughs> Find the equation of a line that satisfies that. X intercept is one, Y intercept three. Okay. So I, I drew the picture, although you don't really have to draw the picture, but I guess it kind of helps. So X intercept is one, one, zero. Y intercept is three, zero, three. And remember the way it works. X intercept, Y is zero. Y intercept, X is zero. Put this on your formula sheet if you wish. Okay. Students sometimes will get confused with this because if you say X intercept, say, oh, that means X is zero. No, it's Y equals zero, it's the other letter. Likewise, Y intercept, it isn't Y that's zero, <clears throat> it's X takes zero. And hopefully you can convince yourself if you look at the picture, All right? Here's the X intercept, but right here, X is not zero, Y is zero. And likewise, here's the y-intercept, but it isn't the y that's zero, it's x that's zero. So I have zero, three, and one, zero. Now, I already have my b here. This qualifies as my b. <clears throat> so my b is three, I just need to slope. So y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Zero minus three divided by one minus zero. And that comes out to be negative three. So my slope is negative three. The y-intercept b is three. So y equals mx plus b. Y equals negative three x plus three. And that's my answer. Okay. Quick double check. What do you get when you plug in zero? Zero times anything is zero plus three is three. It works. And if I plug in one, I'm supposed to get zero. Is that true? Plug in one. Negative three times one is negative three, plus three is indeed zero. So that works. Okay, and then let's see, we're almost out of time. I'll do 33 and then I'll stop there. Let's see if you have any questions about something. 33, find a line that it passes through, blah, 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 parallel to this line. So if it says parallel, you want the same slope. And the perpendicular, you want the negative reciprocal. It's a little bit harder. So I'll show you a perpendicular in the model, hopefully. But right now, you've got a point and parallel to blah, blah, blah. Okay, so 33, and maybe that's about all the time of that. I see we're almost out of time. So 43, parallel. Again, those two railroad tracks parallel to this. So uh, how do I find the slope? Make it look like y equals mx plus b. So the arrow means I add three y to both sides. I trust you know how to do that. And this arrow means I subtract two on both sides. So add three y, subtract two. 
two X minus two equals three Y. Divide both sides by three. And yes, you have Y on the right-hand side, but just quickly change it so that it's on the left. Y equals two thirds X minus two thirds. So the slope of this line is two thirds. What's the slope of the line that I want? Also two thirds, because it's gonna be parallel to that. Okay, just a little time out. If it asks for perpendicular, I would do the negative reciprocal flip and change the sign. So the negative reciprocal of two thirds would be negative three over two. So we'd have to do negative three over two. And I'll show you how to do one of those tomorrow. So point, slope. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, the point slope form. So three goes right there. Four goes right there. Two thirds goes there. So y minus y1, y minus three equals m two thirds times x minus four. And I just say, et cetera, meaning, remember, you don't get to say, et cetera, on a quiz or homework or test. I get to say, et cetera. Sorry, you don't, but you know, I think you can take it from there. That's sort of what I'm saying. Just distribute, add three, and go on from there. Okay, so I will stop there and I'll continue tomorrow because we're just about out of time. Let me stop to share and check the chat. Um, Melvin? Chat? Uh, oh, yeah, question. Excuse me. Um, yeah. Um, I sent my quiz two to you on Friday, but I didn't get a confirmation email. Um, is that correct? You, you got it, right? I just want to make sure you got it. Like, I didn't get like an email okay. back from you. I'm not sure if I got it. So, uh, Bonnie, if you would, why don't you email it back to me? I'll trust you that you sent it. Uh, okay, I'll screenshot I'm, it so you can see the date too. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure, that's fine. Okay. So, anybody else with a question, please? Otherwise, we're done for the day. So Hi, this is David, and, uh, and we'll I have you. a question. Oh. oh, yeah, did you have something? Hello? Go ahead. Yeah, um, I, I will go over uh, the last question on the quiz. Um, but uh, my, my question for the exam is, do we, what, uh, the exam starts at 9 p.m. or 9, uh, 10 after? Okay, I'll send the exam a little bit after nine, so maybe 9.02, and then once you get it, uh -huh. the thing, and then you have until 10 o'clock to finish the test. Now, now, uh, do we need to be in camera live during the process of the exam, or what is it? Yes, you have to have your camera on during the exam. Okay, so doing the exam and being on camera on. Yeah, and it's only then. Got it. Yeah, and only, you got it. You want us to send the quizzes to homm at smccd.edu, right? I sent it to the right one. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right, anybody else, please? Okay, so then then I guess, besides that, I need to send you my ID, right? Yes, if you haven't given me your ID, show me your ID. Yeah, no, I haven't done that yet. Yeah, sometime this week is fine. And then, and then for the homework, yes. Uh, and then uh, for the homework, uh, up to what time can I send you the homework? Like the same day same thing. before or what? Good. Everything that you send me, it's just like the quizzes. So just click, 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 click all the pages and then just email me your homework, just like the quiz and same thing yeah. for the exam. So that's uh -huh. the reason why I had you do two quizzes. Now that yeah. you know what the quiz but is I mean, like. It everything can, you it can be the also way. at the Take same day. On your or cell phone and email them to me. Got it, and it can be the same day or it can be after the homework or what is it? I'll take the homework anytime after class on Thursday. So I don't want it now, that's too early. But as soon as it's 10 o'clock on Thursday, I'll take the homework early if you wish. But otherwise you have until half an hour after okay. the exam to submit the homework. Is I'll, I'll mention this all later again. Is this and, and what about like? Uh, go ahead, Bonnie. Is this Math 255? Our course? Yeah. Our course is called Math 222. Okay, wait, I just labeled it wrong. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, David, did you have something? Yeah. yeah. So so, uh, it, 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 so you don't accept homeworks, let's say, if I send it on Saturday or something like that, right? Correct. The homework has to be submitted half an hour after the test ends. Okay. I mean, 
Think of this. Okay. If we were face to face, I'd ask you to turn it in right when we finish the test, right? Uh, because of COVID, exactly. and you have to take pictures, exactly. I'm giving you an extra half. No, but I'm talking in terms of the homework. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I just mentioned that. Okay, it is 10 o'clock, so we'll have to close. I know some of you have to go to another class. So that's it for today, folks. So have a good day. Um, I'm going to we'll email to you time. right now. Thank I'm you. Gonna email to you. I'm, I'm going to email to you right now. Could you just um, email back that you received it? Yeah, I will see. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye.